All right, y'all, how to do? We are gonna be doing a catch and cook today. I'm most excited about these catfish that we got on the jug lines. And if you guys have never seen the different species of catfish, I'll show them to you right now. We have blue catfish and then we have channel catfish. There's also flathead catfish, but we didn't catch any of those. They're big and ugly and they look a lot different than these. Channel cats and blue cats look very similar, but blue cats get bigger and they have more meat up in their head. Uh, and they're just a lighter gray color and they usually eat a lot more shad and stuff like that where channel cats usually feed more on the bottom but we got a mix of both here. Well, I'm going to show you how to clean a catfish first before we get into the cooking portion and first thing I'm going to do is put a nail into this board right here. The reason for doing that is I'm going to put the catfish on this board like this with the nail and that way I can take pair of skinners and just rip their skin off. This is a cleaning set made by Mora. I really like their knives. I have a bunch of their knives, but this is great for catfish. Okay, there we go. There's our piece of meat. I've got my plank and I've got my nail. This is a way to take the skin off to where you don't have to mess with it when you're, when you're going to eat it. Take one of our bigger channel cats right here and we're gonna start off with a boning knife. I like to use two different knives when I'm cleaning catfish, one for just boning and cutting the little fine cuts and then just a regular fillet knife. They have some areas up in here that you really want to be able to get into. It helps to have just a short little uh, precise knife when you're trying to get around the little pieces parts and if you just want to cut through like heavy uh, scales and stuff before you get in your fillet knife because the fillet knife is really sensitive it dulls down quick so you don't want to just cut through the heavy bone and stuff like that with fillet knife. I'm gonna find that little shoulder up there we're gonna make a cut and then we want to press the knife towards the spine so in towards me at this moment you just want to get in there enough and if, if you got a sharp knife you won't have to dig and cut very much then when you get right here, you'll start seeing the spine change after this uh, uh, dorsal fin right here. And you can really start feeling the tiny little bones and things like that. So I like to just kind of open, open it up with my fingers. Just run as close down the spine about, uh, about a half inch down there. And then when I get about right here, where I can really cut through easy, I know I'm around that spine. Then I take the fillet knife and you can easily cut all the way through right there because you're past the rib cage. And then you want to press the knife parallel to that spine and run it, run it down like this. And when you get close to the end, don't cut it all the way off just yet. But you see, it's a real close cut to that spine when you do that. That's why you want the fillet knife versus the other knife because it's thicker and it's meant for more boning. So I'm actually gonna do the same thing on both sides real quick. So then I'm gonna make a cut right here, make a little triangle and make sure I, I cleanly cut all the way through there. Lightly pressing. I'm just making a little, you'll see why in a second. Just a little cut like that. Then I'm gonna stick his head on the spike right here. A way to pull his skin off. So I'll go right there in the corner. And we just pull down. all the way. These are cheap. You can get them at almost any sporting goods store. Carries catfishing supplies. And then we just cut the end. We make our final cuts up through here. Just staying close to the spine. Cut around the rib cage. Get up into that shoulder. Mm-hmm. And there's where you want that, that boning knife so you can get all the way up in there. I think that's the best part of the catfish and then you have all that big main filet. And then there's no skin. So you can just put that right in the grease. Man, there's a lot of meat on these last two guys. All right, now we just gotta clean old Big Bertha here. Fantastic filets. And look at these big ones. These stud puppies right here. Look at that one. Woo-wee! So we're now gonna put these in, uh, in the food saver. Seal those up so we can do a fish fry. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to get down with some delicious 
Southern fried catfish. Well, I hope you are, because I am. I am starving. I went for a long run today. I've been working on wood projects. <laughs> working up a sweat, I'm ready to eat. Waiting on OSG to get back from baby shower, doing baby shower things. I'm sure she's worked up an appetite too, because she's pregnant. What better way to do a family night dinner with some Southern fried catfish? We're gonna do it two ways though, y'all. You know we gotta do that Frank's Red Hot on there and we're gonna do it the regular way because someone in this household likes very traditional stuff. Here we go now. We're in uh, Lake Fort Mom's kitchen right now. It's looking great, Mom, you're doing good. I just wanna show you guys how this works here. Uh, vacuum sealing these. This is a great way to keep things fresh. Mom, wow. trying to make a cooking show here. So anyway, these are our delicious catfish fillets. Look at them. Have you seen these, Mom? Have you seen the juiciness? Those look good. They look good. They're nice and fatty. We'll spread those things open. Somebody's getting hungry. That's right. Dude, we're waiting on our person here. About five or six fillets. Two of them are Mondo's. Thank you so much. <laughs> See that? It was very TV-like. Just scissors appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> then we cut these. It's all sealed for freshness. And I want to try to keep these dry. I don't want the juices. Oh, do you want a colander? Yeah. No, I don't need a colander. Are you sure? That's a fancy thing that we don't need on the show. The juices contained. Right. Pour them down the sink. Throw that in the trash. Don't leave that laying about. There's the fillets. Okay. What do you think about those? I think they look good. B, what do you think about those? Yeah, I like to cut mine, make them into chunks, and then fry them because catfish, they're normally tougher to fry because you know, they're just thicker, they're fattier. They're heartier. I think that's good. We're going to do a cornmeal flour batter. Salt them up. Hang on. Before you get too excited about that, don't forget about Frank's Red Hot. No, we're not doing that tonight. Yes, we are, Mom. No, we're not. We're going to do it on a couple. Okay, a couple, but not on all of them because... Mama don't like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it tastes good. I just like them without the hot sauce. Okay, well... All right. You've made your opinion known. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A little too big. Too big. The filet should look something like this if you're gonna cut them up. You could do a whole fried one, but I just, I like to get the crispiness all around. I, I call them two bites. This is, this is like a two bite catfish. You do them too thin, you know, you're just getting too much crispy. And they also cook faster this way. They're easier to get in and out. So you're not dabbling with a, a Mondo catfish filet doing a twirly in the thing. Look at that, that is a daggum. That is might as well be a steak filet. Look how thick and juicy that is. Some people don't like catfish because they are just, I don't know, you know people say they, they feed on the bottom and whatnot, but I tell you, they're delicious. We have a mixture of uh, blue cats and channel cats in there, but the biggest one, that's a blue cat, and the, the meat I've noticed on the blue cats is is wider, more like a like a cod wood or something. And then the channel cats, they, they've got that yellowness, Yellow, they have, like right. the fattiness, yeah. which I think is really good. Okay. But we're oh, going to see. I think this could be somebody else. Is that somebody? Yeah, it is your wife. Honey! Oh. We've been waiting for you. Oh. Well, I'm glad I finally made it. Miss B's been waiting Please, on you, obviously. Can I, can I walk in the door? Come here, babe. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's the most stressful traffic day. Your hair says it all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, B, calm down. We're trying to make a dag up show. She loves Stephanie because she's pregnant and she's like, she's feeling it. She's like, oh, I want to protect the baby. Here's your shoebox. I need my shoebox. Look. <laughs> you see this? She knows. Yeah. Yeah. And that way she won't jump on Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> so she'll just go she's, over to you. She's like, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, she's gonna protect me. Cooking under duress. It's called cooking with fun. Cooking with fun. Oh, easy. Everyone that has watched my other fish recipes with this raves about it. Literally it, it raves. Is, it is good. That's an old word. It is good. I like it. Raves. Well, hopefully none of you are having bowel issues out there after this Frank's Red Hawk. I don't have any issues with it. But what you do is just called smothering and covering right there. That's how we say it in the South. You just want to smother it and cover it. And that acts as your stickiness as well. So pat them dry. You don't have to use milk or egg or anything like that. You just use the Franks. 
And then I like to dip it in straight up flour. Mom likes a little cornmeal. She likes a little crispiness in her life. I like the flakiness of the flour, so that's why I just go straight flour. Ain't mama Southern Bama style. Do you like to use the fries as like a tester? Yeah, it gets the grease going, you know, lets you know your grease is hot. Get them crispy, then throw the fish in. You get your area ready. You have the red hot right here. We have the traditional right here. And you want to dip them in the cornmeal or the flour right before you put them into the grease. Don't let them just lay around in flour. They'll get real clumpy and stuff like that. So you go, bam, and then you go right in there. You guys have probably seen some of these fish fries. You know what's up. But all you new people, if you haven't tried fried fish, oh my gosh. Ain't quite the best thing for your heart, but it's good for your soul. Another tip for you guys, frying fish. After you get your grease going, but you want to turn it down because you don't want to burn your grease. That, that's the worst thing you can do for fried fish. Golden little crispies. Ready to go. Okay. I'm ready. Let's get the fish. Let's get the fish going. Okay, I'll do it. That is what your coating is going to look like with the cornmeal. LFD is going to drop one in there so you guys can see what this operation is all about. It's a light, it's a light battering. That goes in there and looks like it. Golden crispies from the south. That's right. There's a disturbance in the fish fry. <laughs> when she smells food, she is She's hungry. hungry. She's hungry. It's gonna go right in there. Boom! I like to slap it in there. And this is what the flour fillet is gonna look like. Yeah. So when you pull them up, we're gonna see some of the dip. You see? You can tell which one's a red hot with flour and which one's cornmeal. The, the flour has a much more flakiness. If you'd have had that uh, big uh, large mouth you guys caught on the trot line, we'd have had fish for everybody. Conservation, there you go. So we're good. I'm glad you let it go. Tell everybody that's a joke. That's that's that's, that's a joke. Yeah, it's a joke. We that would was... never. We would never do that. I never get tired of seeing that. Oh yeah. Fresh organic fish mm -hmm. Look at from the local lake to your plate. I mean there is just nothing that makes a person feel better than that. Unless it's maybe a deer. <laughs> Same concept. <laughs> I'm glad we can do this as a family. Yes, me too. Thanks for catching them. Of course. I'll enjoy eating them. Okay, now get the rest of them in. Class of the Frankers just came off. They're a little toasty. I, I was inside. I so. know you were. I was out here. Yes. There was a lot of jabber jawing though out here. So it's the girl's fault? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta contend with that. Don't be blaming this on us. The men are in charge of the cooking tonight. We'll see how, how well y'all do. Four girls against yes. two dudes. <laughs> but we are the hunter-gatherers, aren't we, Dad? That's right. Time for a taste test. Is hungry. Do I get first taste test? All right. Actually, that would be great because your palate is ready to go. It's ready to go. And we're gonna have two different styles. And I have not had the Franks on the catfish before. Either. I've had it on white bass, I've had it on crappie, I've had it on walleye. Summer catfish, I'm thinking it's gonna be a good move, but we'll see. We'll see. So the the cornmeal one's probably cooler. Yeah, it's crispy. Mm -hmm. So the flour gives you much more crispiness. Like Kentucky Fried Chicken up in here. I don't really taste the red. You like, don't? Okay, I might have overcooked it a tad. <laughs> it's a little burned. Okay, now for the regular. Mm-hmm. A lot less crispy. You didn't have a crunch on that when you bit into it. I would like to marry the two flavors. You would. Can I do that? No, because we are out of fish. <laughs> Maybe on the next run. It has like a slightly burned flavor. <laughs> okay, hey, I tell you what, try this piece because that one's not burned. That came out of the same batch. Okay. This is Frank's? Yep. This is the big mm -hmm. moment. Is okay. that the one? That's the one. That's yeah! The one. I taste the, the Frank's, but it still has the crispiness. 
Ooh, and this is like nice and thick. Yeah, look at that. Like you see that? That's the difference in catfish, y'all, is you get that meatiness. It almost is like a chicken or something. It is. Nice well, and plump. You get you get a real but meatiness. But it has the crispiness over here. Yes. Okay, so Frank's for the win is what you're telling me. That's delicious. Mm-hmm. Okay, darn Frank. Mama, Frank's don't did it again. Well, that's just her opinion. <laughs> You want to get in here? Done. Before I I'm ready, home? babe. I'm ready. <laughs> it's another delicious meal, y'all. From the lake to the fillet knife to the Ziploc to the frying pan and to your mouth. Some of my best summer memories are doing fish fries with friends and family. And we did another one with white bass over the weekend. So I have had my fill of fish this weekend. It's been good. As always with these catch and cooks, I will post the recipes down below. Both. You can try them both and see which one you like better. Or if you have the delicioso recipe dialed in, go ahead and let everybody know that as well. And I might just have to get me a little crispiness. Mm. I definitely overcooked that one. But, <laughs> good news with catfish, you gotta cook it a little longer. You have a, a little bit more leeway because it's got some fattier stuff in there. If you're down with the catfish videos and you wanna see more, let me know in the comments down below. And I hope you're having a blessed day wherever you are and catching some fish, no matter what species. Go out in there and get you a tug on the line. Thanks for watching today, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button, and I'll see you guys on the next one.